Hello everyone. So up until now, we have had a look at multiple concepts. So we have seen the Euclid's division lemma. We have also seen the Euclid's division algorithm. Then we went on to study about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We also saw how we use the fundamental theorem of arithmetic to find the HCF and LCM of multiple numbers. Then we went on to study a little bit about irrational numbers. Now let's move on and try to study something about rational numbers. So in our previous classes, we have studied that rational numbers are all numbers which can be expressed in the form of p, and p upon q, where p and q are co-prime numbers and q is not equals to zero. Now we have also seen that the decimal expansions of rational numbers are of two different types. We either get a terminating decimal expansion or we get a non-terminating but recurring decimal expansion. So let me ask you a question here. Given a rational number p upon q, can you figure out what is the nature of its decimal expansion if it is terminating or if it is non-terminating recurring without actually going through the process of the long division? You might be wondering if it is possible to do that, right? Well, we'll see some method using which we can conclude this. To do that, first let's take an example. So in this example, we have some rational numbers with us, right? And we'll try to see, now these are all rational numbers which have terminating decimal expansions, right? Now what we'll do is we'll try to see if we can find some relation or some common relation which exists between these numbers. So I can represent all these rational numbers in the form of, so first number I can represent as 54 upon 100. The second number I can represent as 516 upon 100, right? The third number I can represent as 325 upon 100. Fourth one, 375 upon 1000. And the fifth one, 468 upon 1000. So I can represent all these rational numbers in the form of P by Q in this way. Now let's do the prime factorizations of the numerators and the denominators in P and Q. And let's bring it to the simplest form. So let's do the prime factorization and then cancel out the common uh, factors in the numerator and denominator. When we do that, this is the form in which we'll get the, these numbers, these rational numbers, right? Now observe the denominators of all these numbers. Well, in the denominators, you'll see that the denominator are of a very common type. So I can represent the denominators of all these numbers in the form of two to the power m into 5 to the power n, right? There are no other prime factors which are available in the denominators of these numbers. So I can represent the denominators of these numbers in a general form as 2 to the power n into 5 to the power n, where m and n are some non-negative integers. In other words, I can also say that if we have any rational number, which is of the form p by q, and it has a terminating decimal point expansion, we can say that the denominator q will be of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n where m and n are non-negative integers. This leads us into a theorem which says that for x being a rational number with a terminating decimal point expansion, we can represent the number x as p by q where p and q are two co-prime numbers and q is represented or can be represented as 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n, where m and n are non-negative integers. Now you might be wondering if the corollary of this particular theorem is true. In other words, if we have a rational number p by q, which, which has p and q as co-prime numbers, and q in the form of 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n, where m and n are non-negative integers, can we say that the rational number can be represented as x which has a terminating decimal point expansion. The corollary of this particular theorem is true and there is a very easy way to prove this. So let's take an example and try to prove the corollary of this theorem. So we know that if there is a rational number which can be represented in, in, in the form of a by b, right, where b can be represented as any power of 10, we can say that this rational number is going to be a terminating decimal point expansion, is going to have a terminating decimal point expansion. Now, we have a rational number which is in the form of p by q, right? 
and we know that q can be represented as 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n where m and n are non-negative integers. Now what we have to do is if we can represent this rational number p by q in the form of a by b, right? if we can represent every such rational number of the form p by q in the form of a by b where b is of the form 10 to the power m, we can say that the corollary of the given theorem is true, right? So let's take an example. Let's take the example 9 upon 150. Now this number I can represent as, so if we do the prime factorization of the numerator and the denominator, and if we bring it to the simplest form, we can represent this as 3 into 3 upon 2 into 3 into 5 into 5, right? If we bring it to the simplest form, we can represent this as 3 upon 2 into 5 square, right? Now this is a rational number of the form p by q, where q can be represented as 2 to the power m into pi to the power n, where the value of m is equals to 1 and the value of n is equals to 2. Now look closely at this number. If I multiply this number by 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, I can rewrite this number as 2 into 3 upon 2 into 2 into 5 into 5. Or I can rewrite this as 6 upon 2 square into 5 square. Or I can rewrite this as 6 upon 10 whole square. So this same number 3 upon 2 into 5 square, we can represent as 6 upon 10 square. So we have brought this representation of the rational number and we have moved it to the representation of a by b where the denominator is of the form of 10 to the power m, right? So here the value of m is going to be 2. So any such rational number which has the denominator in the form of 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n with some manipulation can actually be represented as this rational number where the denominator is of the form of 10 to the power m and we know that wherever the denominator of the rational number is of the form 10 of is of the form 10 to the power m we can easily say that this rational number is going to have a terminating decimal point so this proves the corollary of our theorem that we stated which said that for x to be a rash for x being a rational number with x having a terminating decimal point expansion can be represented as p by q where p and q are co-prime numbers and q can be represented as 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n where m and n are non-negative integers. So this is how we can prove the corollary of this given theorem. Now let's take another example and see what happens if you are not able to represent the rational number p by q into the form of the rational number a by b. So let's take the example 21 upon 1260. Right? So if we do the prime factorization here, we can rewrite the numerator and the denominator as, so the numerator we can rewrite as 3 into 7, right? And the denominator we can rewrite as 2 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 2 into 5 into 7. Now we can bring this rational number into its simplest form. We can cancel 3 and 3, 7 and 7, and we get 1 upon 2 square into 3 into now in the denominator, if we try to represent it, it as the denominator in the rational number a upon b, where b is represented as 10 to the power m, we can multiply the numerator here by 5 and the denominator again by 5. And we'll get the number as 5 upon 2 square into 5 square into 3. It can be represented as 5 upon 10 square into so now here we have represented the denominator of the rational number in terms of the powers of 10, right? So we have represented the denominator as 10 to the power m, where the value of m is 2. But here there is an additional prime number in the denominator, right? We could not get rid of the value 3. There's no way that we can get rid of the prime number 3, which is there in the denominator. Now if you calculate this value, it comes out to be 0. 0 0.016666 and so on. 
So in this case, we see that the rational number when converted into the decimal point expansion gives us a non-terminating recurring decimal point expansion. So from this, we can conclude that if we have a rational number which is given in the form of p by q where p and q are co-prime numbers where q can be represented in the format of 2 to the power m into phi to the power n where m and n are non-negative integers we can say that that particular rational number will have a terminating decimal point expansion and if we have any other prime number in the denominator of the rational number then we can say that the rational number is going to be a is going to give us a non-terminating recurring decimal point expansion. So now this observation is very helpful in solving problems because we don't have to follow the long division method and find out the actual decimal point expansion. We can just have a look at the denominator and we can do the prime factorization of the denominator and figure out if the denominator is of the form 2 to the power m into phi to the power n and if it is in that form we can conclude that the rational number is going to have a terminating decimal point expansion. And if it is not in that form, then we can conclude that the rational number is going to have a non-terminating recurring decimal point expansion.